potential ways they could cross. Second possibility. Okay, so I'm going to label the ends of these, you know, the, the points at which the zero growth isoplanes touch our x and y axis. So here it's k2 for beta. <coughs> Population two on this axis. All right, so thinking back to last week and what we just talked about, so this blue line here represents all the values, or all the population sizes of species one and species two that combine would add up essentially to a, uh, to species one being at their carrying capacity in the population not grown. So in other words, if there are lots of individuals in species one, so we're clear up here, it doesn't take very many individuals with species two to essentially stop them from growing. If there are very few individuals of population one, it takes a whole bunch of species two to get them to stop growing. So anywhere underneath this line, underneath the blue line, what direction is species one doing? Is it growing or declining? Or under the blue line? Growing. Okay, so anywhere under the blue line, and species one is still has some carrying capacity left. Oh, we can. And so they would still grow. Makes sense. If the combinations of population sizes of one and two are above this blue line, then species one would be declining in size. They'd be over carrying capacity and would be declining. Same thing for species two. Anywhere under the red line? It's good. The it's population growing. has room to grow. Mm -hmm. Above the red line, the population would decline because it's over carrying capacity. Would decline, but. exactly. All right, so let's see what this predicts. So that one with just competitive exclusion. The line on top is the species that wins. Let's start in two different places. See what happens. So those are our two starting points. We'll see what happens in both cases. All right, so let's say we've got this many, right? We just have a few individuals of species one and kind of a moderate number of species two. We're under the red line, we're under the blue line. So what's going on with the two populations? Uh, does this, the principle that I read in the book that said, like whichever population is able to increase its numbers faster will usually overshadow the population with less numbers, does that apply That's to this point? True. That's usually true. Mm -hmm. So is that the answer you're looking for to apply to that point? No, I'm saying though, at this point, just based on the where we are in relation to the red and blue line, mm -hmm. are the pop two populations growing or declining? The two populations are growing, but at a very different rate. So you can see the blue one's growing, 
red one's growing, right? Let's kind of depict that by kind of a uh, 45 degree line here showing that we're going up on the y-axis, meaning population two is growing. And we're going across on the x-axis, meaning population one is growing. Once we get here, we've hit the red line. What happens to population two once we get to that red line? Stops growing. Stops, Stops growing. growing. <coughs> That's zero growth for that. How about population one? Still room to grow. Still room to grow. So this is not going to go up anymore, right? But we're still going to be going to the right. Population one is still growing. But as they grow, that means we're now going to end up above the red line. Right, so if we move to the right a little bit, have a little <coughs> bit of population growth in species one, that puts us above the red line. What happens to species two when we get above the red line? It starts to decline. It starts to decline. But yet we're still below the blue line, so we're still going to be moving this way. So we're sort of going down on our y-axis, but still across on our x-axis. And then that's where they both will reach equilibrium. Equilibrium, right? So at that point, they both stop growing because now we're touching both the red and blue lines. All right, if we, if we would have started here, so we had you know, this many species one and that many of species two, kind of the opposite scenario from the first one. Well, we're under both blue and red line. Mm -hmm. So both populations have the ability to grow. But now we hit the blue line first. So species one stops growing. Species two continues to grow, which is just up on this graph. But now we're over the blue line, which means population one, species one would start to decline as species two continues to grow. And you end up there again. Coexistence. So this is a case where we have coexistence between two competitors. Neither of the two species can gain a long-term competitive advantage. Neither species has the ability to outcompete the other, and they tend to, no matter you know, what, what the environment does, you know, their population sizes, wherever you end up here, eventually comes back to that equilibrium point. All right, so this one, remember, was competitive exclusion. Okay, let's check out this. This one, we'll put our <coughs> growth lines in there, so under the blue, Growth for species one above the blue is declined. Under the red is growth for species two, and above the red is declined. Try the same strategy we did there. We'll just have two different starting places. All right, so we're sort of in the same scenario here, right? We're under both the red and blue lines. So both populations have the ability to grow. Start, their sizes are growing on both axes. But now we hit the blue line first, which means species one stops growing. But we're still gonna be moving up on the y-axis because we're still under the red line for species two. Once we move up, now species one is, has exceeded their carrying capacity, but species two is still growing. So species one is going to start going down on the x-axis while species two continues to grow. And we end up there. That 
And when we get to that point, what is the population size of species one? Zero. Zero. So in this case, species one has been competitively excluded. But if we started here, so both populations grow until we get to the red line, then population two is going to decline while population one continues to grow. We end up there. Now species two has been competitively excluded. So in this scenario, either species, we'll say, could win. So the outcome depends on which species has the numerical advantage to start with. In this first scenario where we had quite a few individuals of species two and not many of one, species two wins. Here in the opposite, species one wins. Why is that the way that it is um, in that the, the population that has larger numbers will usually outcompete the one that has smaller numbers even though they aren't directly fighting? Like if prey species, yeah. this still applies to, to, prey, I mean, to prey species even though they're not fighting each other, not to my knowledge. Yeah. So I, I think probably the best answer to that would be that the one with the numerical advantage as you, as it grows, um, has the ability to dominate resources or use resources more than the one with fewer individuals. Even if they're not, you know, having uh, aggressive interactions, uh, if one species is numerically dominant, they get a bigger share of the resources that are there. But, oh. but, but the answer to that question ultimately probably depends on you know, lots of different things in the environment that they're in. So you probably can't say there's one answer to that question, mm -hmm. but that's one possible scenario. Okay. Okay? So these are the possible outcomes of the local Volterra competition <coughs> equations. You could have the blue line, or you know, the the, the zero growth ice decline for one is above two, never, they never cross, and one then is the winner, excludes two. Or you could have the red line on top with no crossing of the lines, and then two would be the winner. Or the lines could be crossed, and depending on how they cross, you could get coexistence, have some stable equilibrium point there where they sort of move to. Or you could get uh, the stable equilibrium points are at the carrying capacities of the two species, in which case one will exclude the other. What about this point right here? Coexistence. It could at that spot, right? So, so at that at that point, if they were at that point, that means neither population would be growing. But any sort of <clears throat> fluctuation from that, one individual dies, there's a hard frost, whatever, and you move it a little bit one way or the other, then it starts attracting into these other places. Or if you have a, um, or if you have a graph that sort of one line goes like this and the other line goes like straight down to where the point is far more to the left or far more to the right, then that would really impact the population of one species or another, even yeah. though they do coexist at one point, but they coexist at the point where there's far more of one species than the other. Yeah. Then that could definitely favor the species that there's more of, I, I would assume. So that place where they cross there is sort of like, we call that an unstable equilibrium point. It'd be sort of like balancing a a rock or a bowling ball on top of a mountain like that. I mean, you, you might be able to get it to kind of stay there and balance, stay in that spot, but any little nudge, one way or the other, and it, you know, heads off in another direction. Same thing here. They might be able to coexist at that point, but any little nudge that moves them off sends them either here or there. 
Okay, so those are our possible outcomes. All of these things happen in the real world. There are cases where one species outcompetes the other one. There are cases where sometimes one species outcompetes the other one and sometimes the other one does. There are cases where two competitors coexist and, and continue competing. 